I'm Daniel. And I'm Jay-Z. And this is Just My DIY. And today, we're going to show you how we turned this giant industrial cable spool into... A patio pallet bench. Yes. First thing we got to do is take this puppy apart so we can get it in the back door of the garage. Also note, do not disassemble puppies. This is not really a puppy. Not a puppy at all. No, it's a spool. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's do it. We take the center to hopefully have it keep its shape once the spool was disassembled. Then we move on to removing the bolts. Me on one side, you packing its traction, and Jay-Z wrenching them off. Then we did this for all six bolts. Got them as far out as we could. A few of them were stuck. And a hi-ya! <laughs> Kung Fu wins. I don't think the tape worked. <laughs> I took the last couple of rods out and then it was rolling the wheels into the garage. These things are moderately heavy, so a two person lift is wise. And we take out and try to repair the damage that they left on the side of the room for, anyways. Yeah, chances are good if you find one of these on the side of the road, it's not going to be in the best condition. So. We just pulled out a couple of boards, screwed them back in. Using a mallet as a manipulation device. <laughs> and then cut off the bottoms. After pulling the nails and staples, of course. Second one goes right on top. We are trying to align it as best we can and then make the same flat cut on the bottom. Trying to align the grains of the wood so that everything is level and parallel as we like it to. And then we start with a rough cut on the pallets. We're cutting these down to the right depth that we want, so we just use a circular saw to cut right behind the middle support of these pallets we have. Setting them up in place, we get to uh, know a generic placement, figuring out the angles, uh, how far back it should tilt, how on the ground it should be, and then create support brackets that help us mark our intentions. We put these guide brackets on both sides, and this is just to help us on the assembly later. They're not going to hold a whole lot of weight, but they're very helpful. Then we move on to creating the line that we want to cut. We want to keep with the circular feel of these wheels, so we use a plastic platter to make the outline. Using a five and a half inch blade on our jigsaw, Please note to self that this is sped up about 6,000%. <laughs> so take your time, make sure you pull any nails or, or staples that are in place ahead of time. Once we had one done, we traced it onto the other one and then went right back in with the jigsaw. It's good to have a second person to be able to catch that piece as it comes off. And then you start finishing your shaping with a belt sander on 80 grit. There's a lot of sanding in this project. We speed through most of it, but the ultimate goal was to get everything not spiky and actually smooth for when we stain this. If you paint, you probably don't have to do as much sanding as we did, but we wanted the natural look on this. Now time for the palette bench. We had a third pallet which we're actually going to break down and pull the planks off of. This is because we really wanted to reinforce the pallets we're using for the bench. So we needed lots of wood that was going to be similar in character. A crowbar, a mallet, and lots of patience. The pallet came right apart. And then just knocking the nails out of the planks that we want to use. quickly shaping them down to the width that they can fit into their openings. So we lay out the planks, get them to which pieces of the wood we actually want to use, mark them, and then take them over to the miter saw. Put them back in for a good test fit. Make sure everything's the way you want it. 
and before you screw them down, do a little bit of a hand sand on the sides of these boards. These pallets were not in great condition and since people are going to sit on these, they needed to not be spiky. Once they were hand sanded on the sides, did a little bit of drilling and screwing in two screws on each side, but be careful not to split the wood. The frame board from the disassembled pallet also came in handy reinforcing the frame of the bottom of the bench seat. Yeah, this has to be able to support at least two humans, so we wanted to make sure it was nice and sturdy. And then, more sanding. We sanded using two grits on everything, started with an 80 and then went up to about a what, 150? 150, 180, something. And here is the wood we're going to use to box out the ends so that we have actual attachment points for the bolts that we would use to assemble it. On the bottom bench we have that middle rail and so we had to use two blocks of 2x4. The first one we screwed in from both sides and then the other one we screwed in from the outside and then a screw in the top. And bottom. And bottom. And what you see here is the bench bottom had a couple of boards that were sticking out of the bottom on the pallet, so I took the oscillating multi-tool and just trimmed those flush because I didn't want anyone's legs getting caught on those. Luckily, this was the right tool for the job and made quick work of smoothing those out. Now the side tables. The spare pieces that we have from cutting the original shapes onto the arms is what we use to make the side tables with. Trying to use as much of the circle as possible, we trimmed a flat level plane through it using, of course, that five and a half inch blade on the jigsaw. And then of course finishing it with, again, the belt sander to get the shape and the angles and everything to be as close as possible. Yeah, we didn't want to use a circular saw because we just couldn't clamp the piece down well enough for our confidence. Making brackets using just straight 45s, two different sizes to account for the two different widths of our shelves. These will be used to attach these side tables. Now staining and sealing. We did want to keep with a natural look, so we went with a stain. But first, we polyed the bottom to seal it off and then put some feet on so that poly could dry while we were doing everything else. Now here's a note, if you're using stain and you're using two different cans of it, mix the two before you start using them to make sure that everything turns out the same tone. Sometimes different stains come from different lots and they can look different. Once we got those mixed up, we started laying the stain on with the rag. As always, be wary of drips and make sure that everything is nice and even. We stained the pallets and the spool sides. This took a long time, so we're gonna jump ahead because you don't need to watch all that. But the outsides and insides, as well as the side tape. Once that stain was dry, it was time for some spar urethane. This is great for using on outdoor furniture that you really want to seal up. So I took a brush, brushed it on everything, front, sides, bottoms, everywhere, to make sure everything was nice and protected. And then let it dry for a good 24 hours. nice hot garage with a fan running. Everything is stained, sealed, and dried, so now it's time for assembly. Which means we're going to take it piece by piece by piece by piece by piece by piece by piece, by piece out there so that we don't have to carry it out of here as one complete heavy AF unit. Yeah. 
This whole thing's gonna be about 150 pounds all put together. So once it's assembled, it ain't moving. Well, it'll move, just it'll be hard. It'll be really heavy. Lay your sides down on a nice piece of cardboard as to not ruin your stain and sealing jobs. And then place the pallets on top and tack them into place. We use two deck screws on each pallet to secure them and get a setup for the trailing. We use a nice Forstner bit to do the drilling with, boring the bolt holes out. And then we untack the pallets so we can bore the holes the rest of the way. Because your bit is too short. And this is a lot of wood to go through. Bring your wall back up after you give it a quick vacuum and insert bolts into your bolt holes. Pack them in the rest of the way if you have some friction and use a nice small piece of wood and a mallet. This helps protect both the mallet and the furniture. Lay it back down and set the pallet in place, aligning your bolt holes. Secure in place using your washer and a nut. We're not going to tighten everything down until both sides are on. Once that's done, we stand up the other side and start to make the connection. We complete the connection again using some deck screws to tack the, the box out ends into place. And then night fell and we lost the light. But we kept working to at least get everything tightened up. So we bored the holes, same as before, took it back apart, and then realigned the bolt holes. This was slightly more difficult than the first side, but with a few body shoves and a nice mallet and a piece of wood, we drove everything through. The one ring to fasten this together with. And the nut to secure it with. Too bad he's not mic'd up. He's doing like a Lord of the Rings or something. This time we're going to tighten the living daylights out of it. Yes. Get it? It's dark. <laughs> so again, one person on the inside with an adjustable wrench providing the traction, and then me on the outside with the... Ratchet. 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 The next day, we're adding the decorative washers back into it because we really liked that touch. The ones that were going to be exposed, we actually just glued in place because we didn't want a bolt and nut sticking out and hurting people's arms. We attach the brackets using a couple of deck screws going into the plate. Side tables. Side tables. And prep a couple of holes for it going into the side wall. So two down on each bracket and two coming out the sides. We did this for all four brackets, but you get the point. We placed these about four inches down, so we felt that was a nice comfortable height. Grab the level and then tack it in place with deck screws. Ta-da! Ta-da! No. No, it's not an optical illusion. Jay-Z is actually taller than me now. I grew at least a bench. Oh, <laughs> she cracks herself up. All the time. But you know what's not cracking is this bench. It is rock solid, and as with most art projects, I love it. And if you love this video and 
things like that, then feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and of course, check out what we use to make it down below. And if you're not watching this on our website, head over to JustMikeDIY.com for more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.